O come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship together, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit says, Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at the rebellion in the day of testing in the desert, where your ancestors tested and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Because of this, I was provoked with that generation, and I said, They have always been of erring heart, and they do not know my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil and unfaithful heart, so as to forsake the living God. Encourage yourselves daily while it is still today, so that none of you may grow hardened by the deceit of sin. We have become partners of Christ, if only we hold the beginning of the reality firm until the end. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. O that day you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert. Where your fathers tempted me, they tested me though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Forty years I was wearied of that generation. I said, this people's heart goes astray. They do not know my ways. Therefore, I swore in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to him and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched the leper, and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Then he said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus My dear brothers and sisters, Uh, Today, again, in the Gospel of St. Mark, we hear of another miracle story of Jesus. And in this particular account, we hear how indeed a leopard comes to Jesus asking, as a matter of fact, St. Mark uses the word begging uh, for him that he wishes to be clean and to have the Lord uh, cure him of his infirmities and his ailments. And the words of Jesus in the formula, so to speak, for the miracle simply says, he touches the leper and says to him, I do will it be made clean. I do will it be made clean. My dear brothers and sisters, this formula or these words of Jesus not only are important in the context of this gospel in relationship to the miracle that has occurred and how Jesus does make the leper clean, Because as you remember, not only did lepers have to deal with the physical and mental infirmity that leprosy bore upon them, but leprosy was also a huge, huge social stigma. And a lot was not known about leprosy. And at the time, it was very much believed that leprosy was a communicable uh, disease. And along with not only being a communicable disease, it was also seen culturally as a punishment from God. And that those physical maladies would come because of one's own sinfulness or the sinfulness of their ancestors that were now being played out upon them. And so along with all of the normal physical difficulties this kind of disease would place upon a person and limitations, there was a whole slew of other mental and we might even say emotional difficulties that one felt and experienced. And usually once one had leprosy, there was no cure for it. So it was basically a perpetual sentence of suffering, isolation, and even in many times, tremendous prejudice. And so when Jesus uses the words, I do will it, be made clean, that notion of clean is not only to eliminate the person's physical maladies, but the purification of one's very being down to their soul itself and basically their regeneration. Many of the church fathers would often remind us that these words are prefigurements of what even baptism does for us. It cleanses our very being. And that's why this gospel has important reference as we follow it the week after the baptism of our Lord. And so our Lord reminds us that all of us are called to be made clean physically, spiritually, emotionally, and that he wills us to be in that state because he is willing what God is willing. The two wills of the father and son cannot be separate in their hypostatic union. And therefore, it reminds us today of how God's desire is not just for this leper, but Mark is making it clear the example of what is happening in this gospel is really a desire for God to have union with all his created order of humanity, and that we are all called and willed to be made clean. 
And so as we continue, the words uh, from our first reading from the letter to the Hebrews, the first line I think is so beautiful and it'll maybe a little bit of a uh, Lexio Divina for us today if we repeat it while we're doing our daily works or chairs. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at the rebellion in the days of the testing in the desert where your ancestors tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Jesus reminds us by his example of what God promised and is reflected by the author of our first reading to the Hebrews today, that God's will for humanity has remained consistent throughout salvation history. But now, in light of Jesus Christ, and now through his death and resurrection, it has come to complete fulfillment. We have every means necessary to be made clean. <clears throat> As the leper in today's gospel reading trusted in Jesus to heal him, let us also confidently, with that same trust, present our petitions to the Lord. That the church throughout the world may be sanctified through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, o Lord. That political authorities may receive the grace and blessings of our Almighty God in working to protect and defend the sanctity of life from conception through natural death, let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from sickness, disease, or any type of illness that separates them from the community, may they feel the Lord's healing embrace and be consoled in their time of suffering and need. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may we grow in faith, hope, and love and be transformed by the grace to a life of gospel fidelity. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring before the Lord today, we pray to the Lord. For Andy Antos, for whom we offer Mass today, and for all of the faithful departed, may they rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your steadfast love, receive and grant our petitions according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise to our Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for all eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church in one voice, we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall have their fill. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Be Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.